The MC-21-310 project was intended to be one of the flagships of Russia's civil aviation modernization. It is a next-generation aircraft that boasts a composite wing, Russian-made engines, and a high proportion of domestically produced components. Nevertheless, as development progressed, significant discrepancies between the declared specifications and the actual capabilities began to appear. In this context, the industry now recognizes the restart of serial production of earlier designs, such as the T214, as a necessary safety cushion rather than a contingency plan. Nail Kairulin, the former general director of Kazan Aviation Plant, KAs, has stated that the T214 is the sole viable alternative for the reconstruction of the domestic aviation fleet as the MC-21-310 has not yet verified its declared flight range. His words underscore a more comprehensive understanding of the obstacles that Russian aviation is currently encountering, including technical, personnel-related, and organizational issues. The stated flight range of the MC-21-310 is one of the main concerns that Karulin has pointed out. The import substituted version of the MC-21-310 is several tons heavier than the previous version, which was built with foreign materials and components. The airframe is approximately 5.75 tons heavier. This weight increase has significantly impacted the aircraft's range. It can now fly only approximately 2,800 kilometers, or even 2,000 kilometers, with a complete commercial load. In contrast, the original version, which still used foreign engines and materials, was expected to travel up to 5,100 kilometers with the Russian PD-14 engine and up to 5,500 kilometers with foreign power plants. As a result, the MC-21 310's service ceiling and overall performance have also decreased. The United Aircraft Corporation, UAC, has allocated an additional 2.2 billion rubles to enhance the aircraft's flight characteristics, primarily through weight optimization, to resolve these issues. New materials and design refinements are being implemented to reduce the weight of the fuselage fairings, tail assembly, and wings. So, Carolyn's concerns are backed by real information. The MC-21-310, as it is now, cannot achieve the range and efficiency that were originally promised, and it will take a lot of time to meet these goals with the current design and production setup. The TU-214 is increasingly perceived as a fallback project that can guarantee the ongoing renewal of Russia's aviation fleet, as the MC-21-310 continues to experience delays. What alternatives are available to us? Kairulin expressed the sentiment that is shared by numerous individuals in the industry when he stated, there is nothing else. The Russian government and industrial authorities have declared their intention to increase the production of Tu-214 aircraft to 20 aircraft annually by 2027, 2028. To accomplish this production rate, the modernization plan for KAZ, a subsidiary of Tupolev, involves the construction of new facilities and the reconstruction of existing ones. Officials emphasize the significance of building future Tu-214s with minimal or no foreign components, guaranteeing their authenticity as 100% Russian. But the road to this goal is fraught with challenges, including those noted by Kairulin and journalists. Personnel scarcity continues to be the most pressing concern. According to reports, KAs employed approximately 2,000 personnel in 2024. However, this did not entirely resolve the issue. Engineers, designers, composite specialists, avionics experts, and quality controllers are all necessary for the facility, in addition to laborers. Another constraint is the absence of in-house production capabilities. The facility is compelled to outsource specific parts and materials due to a lack of composite and casting facilities. The loss of professional institutions and the continuity of training has also had an impact. Kairulin regrets the absence of the technical colleges and workshops that previously provided training for machinists and fitters. Flight crew training institutions have also disappeared. 
Rebuilding an experienced workforce is a slow and challenging process in the absence of this foundation. The field is being entered by young specialists, but they lack practical experience, and it requires years to develop the level of expertise that the Soviet system once produced. Weaknesses in supply chains and subcontracting further hinder the process. Even when the company is prepared to increase production, suppliers consistently fail to meet KZ's quality and scheduling standards. Facility modernization is currently in progress. The infrastructure and production lines of KZ are currently being renewed. However, the project is not expected to be finalized until late 2026. Additionally, regulatory and certification concerns may arise. The TU-214 was initially intended for a three-person cockpit, pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer, a configuration that is now considered obsolete in the context of contemporary civil aviation. Additional redesigns and recertification work are required, as numerous airlines favor two-person flight decks. The TU-214 currently exceeds the MC-21-310 in terms of reliability and preparedness, despite the aforementioned challenges. Decades of accumulated experience have supported its airframe and production systems. The design of the 2214 is well understood, has undergone regular service testing, and relies on firmly established manufacturing processes, despite being somewhat outdated. This level of maturity reduces the probability of unforeseen technical hazards or production disruptions. On the contrary, the MC-21-310 is a more experimental effort. Advanced composites, altered structural weight, and ongoing flight testing introduce numerous uncertainties. When fleet readiness is a priority, the TU-214's well-documented performance parameters and predictable, manageable issues provide an advantage. Another factor that favors the TU-214 is its faster mobilization pace. The resumption of full-scale TU-214 output would be significantly easier than waiting for the MC-21-310's developmental challenges to be resolved, as modernization programs are already underway, and a significant portion of the old production infrastructure at KAs remains operational. In addition to these practical benefits, the TU-214 is also backed by robust political and strategic backing. It is in perfect harmony with Russia's national objective of sustaining a fully Russian commercial aircraft program and its import substitution policy. In this regard, it functions not only as a transitional solution, but also as a strategic reserve that guarantees the continuity and security of domestic aviation as newer, less proven projects mature. Although the official objectives are ambitious, they are not being implemented. KZ is expected to fall short of its objective to deliver four TU-214s by the end of 2025, primarily as a result of supplier delays and personnel shortages. The formal objective of producing 20 aircraft annually by 2027, 2028 remains in place. However, experts warn that it will necessitate a significant mobilization of resources and a resolution to systemic issues. Although modernization is ongoing, numerous facilities are still incomplete. Even when production capacity is attained, demand must still be guaranteed, as airlines must be willing to operate and purchase these aircraft. Kairulin's statements indicate that the industry's challenges are not solely technological, but also institutional and generational. One significant factor is the collapse of the professional training system. A consistent supply of highly competent technicians, engineers, and test pilots was generated by the Soviet-era system of vocational schools and in-house workshops. Currently, many of these structures have been replaced by short-term training programs that are unable to offer the same level of expertise. Additionally, coordination has been compromised by the absence of managerial continuity. The sector was transferred from the Ministry of Defense Industry to the Ministry of Economics and subsequently to Rosavia Cosmos and ultimately to the Ministry of Industry and Energy following the dissolution of the Soviet Ministry of Aviation Industry.
This bureaucratic fragmentation undermined accountability and long-term planning. The distribution of composite production has also been a challenge. Kairulin recollects that Russia had the requisite materials for composite wings prior to the imposition of sanctions. Additionally, there was a facility in close proximity to Moscow that was capable of providing the necessary fiber. Nevertheless, the internal integration that Kays had previously possessed was disrupted when production capacities were subsequently transferred to external firms, such as Aero Composite. According to him, this was a costly error that resulted in a decrease in flexibility and an increase in dependency. Several measures could be implemented to stabilize Russia's aircraft industry and facilitate the effective coexistence of the MC-21-310 and 2214, as indicated by current conditions and official statements. Investing in human capital is a critical priority. Russia must re-establish its aviation education ecosystem by providing renewed support for technical colleges, apprentice workshops, flight schools, and retraining programs, in addition to employing additional personnel. The cultivation of the expertise necessary for modern composites, avionics, quality assurance, and system integration is contingent upon the implementation of such initiatives. Equally critical is the reconstruction of domestic supply chains. Reliable sources of composite materials, avionics, and mechanical components are essential for the consistent production of aircraft. Consequently, it is imperative to reinforce or recreate these industries. In addition, the MC-21-310 design necessitates ongoing optimization. In order to guarantee safety and efficiency, it is imperative that efforts to reduce structural weight and enhance performance are conducted with rigorous engineering discipline and supported by comprehensive flight testing. Another fundamental measure is the modernization of industrial infrastructure. To satisfy the quality standards and production volume mandated by civil aviation, substantial investments in sophisticated machine tools, robotics, and quality control systems are necessary. Conversely, these technological and material advancements necessitate consistent leadership. It is imperative to establish unified strategic management, which includes transparent decision-making, coherent coordination among ministries, and distinct long-term objectives in order to prevent the recurrence of disruptions. The success of all of these measures will be contingent upon the adoption of realistic expectations. These structural issues must be addressed in a systematic manner in order to achieve ambitious production targets, such as the production of 2214 cents annually by 2027, 2028. The industry is at risk of persistent production bottlenecks, budget overruns, and continued delays, which could potentially undermine both aircraft programs if such a foundation is not established. In conclusion, the aviation industry is at a critical juncture, as evidenced by the remarks of Nail Kairulin, Russian media, and expert sources. The MC-21-310, which is intended to serve as the focal point of Russia's new civil aviation fleet, is confronted with significant obstacles, including weight, performance, and production capability. The Tu-214, which was previously a legacy design, is currently being revived as a practical and imminent lifeline for domestic carriers. However, the 2214 is not an ideal solution. Its own production is restricted by the same fundamental weaknesses, a scarcity of qualified labor, fragmented supply chains, antiquated standards, and managerial chaos. Neither initiative can realize its full potential without a coordinated strategy that addresses these systemic issues, human, technical, and institutional. The civil aviation sector of Russia may indeed recover and modernize if the country's aviation authorities and manufacturers are able to effectively invest in people, technology, and infrastructure, all while maintaining long-term consistency in governance. However, the journey ahead is still lengthy and necessitates strategic clarity, realism, and patience. If you find this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take our membership to encourage us.